Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Let's Make Pokemon in Unity. And today we're going to have maybe a little bit of a longish episode. Uh, but today we're going to start with the implementation of a few of the Pokemon characters and just the um, battle sequence. So when you're walking through the long grass, uh, we just wanted to throw up a random battle every now and then. Uh, and that follows a formula. So um, again, as of the last episode, we have a few images that we need to get. If you just go out to our GitHub page, again, the link is in the description. You can go to the Assets folder. And then there's uh, two images added. So the first one's in the sprite sheets. You just want to download the Pokemon folder. And then the second one is in the UI. You just want to download the battle.png uh, there. And that should be all for that. So once you've done that one, uh, you can just jump into Unity. Okay, so we're just going to go over to the images and set them up for when we want to add them in. So in the UI, we're going to click on the battle. And we just want to set it to be point. And then we also want to set it to true color. Uh, we'll play around with the pixels per unit a little bit later on when we want to see how big the image is, uh, but for now it should be fine. Uh, finally, if you go over to the Pokemon folder inside the sprite sheets, we want to set it up to uh, point and true color again, so we get the quality. We want to set the pixels per unit to be 96, and then we also want to set it to be multiple, so we'll click apply one more time. And then when we go over to the sprite editor, all we're going to want to do is click slice. I'm going to do a grid by cell size, and then change them both to 96 rather than 64. So when you click slice, it creates a slice of our Pokemon. Okay, so then you can click apply if you like, and then we go over to scene and we can start working on this. The first thing we need to do is go into our um, prefabs, uh, then ground tiles, and then our long grass. In here, we just want to add a box collider of 2D, and then we're also going to click uh, is trigger. So it, just, it, will, it will let us walk through, and it just ensures that it's a, um, a trigger so we can detect. We're going to have, uh, go over to the scripts class and then the map and then we're going to create a new c -sharp script called uh, long grass. We're going to open that up. Okay, and we're going to remove the comments. Uh, so the first function we're just going to add in is a void on trigger enter 2d. And then we can just do a collider 2d uh, call. And so that's just saying basically when anything comes inside of the trigger so when anything touches uh, inside the collider it's just going to run that uh, method right there so we just want to first we want to check if it's a player so what we can do is uh, if call.getComponent and in here we're just going to say player movement for now later on we'll have a dedicated player class and we'll check it with that uh, but for now we'll just say if it has the class of player movement then we know that it's um, the player that is just entered up here we might just want to add in uh, what type it is so we can say uh, public um, uh, what do we call it we called it ah yeah sorry over in the biome list this is the mistake I made last time uh, what I meant to do is just say grass sand and then we can say water uh, we can also come back and add a few more. I'll just add an ice as well. Uh, so we'll come over here and we'll say public biome list and we can say grass type. And this is because we can have grass uh, in different biomes where you want to encounter the Pokemon. Or you might even want to add the long grass script onto another tile if you like. Okay, so the formula is, uh, for encountering Pokemon uh, in the actual game is. Uh, the probability of it is uh, x divided by 187.5 and x is determined by what type the Pokemon is, uh, sorry, uh, rarity what the Pokemon is, uh, where very common is 10, common is 8.5, etc, etc. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write those values right now. Um, over in base Pokemon, we're going to have... Um, um, so something I just picked on really quickly is in the base Pokemon class uh, We do also just need to add a reference to the Pokemon's rarity So we can just type in rarity and then type rarity again um, So what we're going to do is we're just going to create an individual one um, So we're going to go into our long grass again and the way that it's done is uh, for very common, we'll just write it like this, very common is equal to 10, common is equal to 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 8.5, 
a semi rare is equal to 6.75, uh, rare is equal to 3.33, and then uh, very rare is equal to uh, 1.25. So that's the value for um, our p's. Uh, sorry for our x. Uh, what we divide by 1. Point, uh, sorry, 1,000. Uh, 187.5. And so what we're going to do is when we do it, we're going to times it by 100 to get the actual percentage. We'll generate a random number between uh, 0 and 100. And if it's less than that, uh, the number that it gives, um, then that's a type of Pokemon that we're going to pretty much um, give to the uh, player for, to battle. So for now what we can do is we can just set values for all of these. So we can go float uh, VC is equal to 10 divided by, so we're doing brackets, is equal to 10 divided by, so we don't actually need to, uh, 10 divided by 187.5F. And then you can do f uh, the same for each one. And I'll come back once I've done them. Okay, so now that I've done that, what we want to do is uh, generate a number between 0 and 100. So we're going to say is our float uh, P is equal to uh, random dot range between uh, sorry random dot range uh, between 0 0.0 f and then 100.0 f uh, we add the 0 f to ensure it's a float so we can get a number um, that's a float rather than just an integer um, so once we've done that what we want to do is check in order of uh, reverse order so we want to go VR and then R that's just so that we can always give the best option if it does get the best option uh, so we'll do if P is less than VR times 100 then we can do something and then we're just gonna keep doing so on and so forth so we'll go else if P is less than uh, R times 100 and then so on and so forth so I'll be back once I've done this so this is just gonna um, allow us to get the best uh, followed by the worst depending on uh, what we generate so next what we're going to do is have a function sorry we'll create a game manager so we'll go to scripts and it'll just be outside because it's uh, one of the core ones and we'll call it game manager and we'll also create a empty uh, game object and we'll just reset it to zero 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 and give it the game manager and call it game manager uh, in that we'll also give it a new tag and call it a game manager and so the game manager we need to set the tag of the game manager to that uh, so we can reload all and we'll also want to open up the game manager script okay so in the game manager script um, We'll get, we'll get to it in a sec. So long grass, we want to have a reference to it. So we're going to go private uh, game manager GM. So at the start, what we'll do is we'll set uh, GM is equal to game object uh, with two capitals uh, dot find game object with tag. And it will just be the tag of game manager. And then we can also at the end, we need to get the component game manager like that. Okay, so in Game Manager, we're going to have a uh, two references to cameras. So we'll have public camera, uh, sorry, we'll do public transform uh, game object, sorry, of uh, player camera. And then we'll have a public game object of our battle camera. So down here, we'll have a public void enter enter battle and then we can also add in a rarity uh, Pokemon rarity or rare this will then choose a um, Pokemon for us uh, but for now what we can do is just say player camera dot enabled uh, sorry dot active is equal to false and then our battle camera dot active is equal to true uh, up the top we can also set that to the opposite that this is true and then this one is false and sorry we want to do set active that'll be better that's the way that unity wants you to do it all right so that works so i've just gone through and reset them really quickly uh so in the long grass what we're going to do is we're going to go if gm 
does not equal no. Then we'll do gm dot uh, enter battle. And this will be rarity uh, dot very rare. And we'll just do the same. We'll copy these two lines and put them into each one. Uh, and then we'll just change this to what they are. So for example, that one's very common. This one's common. Uh, this one is semi-rare, and then up here is rare, and that's how that's going to work. Um, so for now, we can just set up the battle area. What we'll do is we will come to our game manager. Uh, for now, we'll just drag on the main camera for the player camera, and then we'll also come down and we'll do a game object. camera actually no sorry uh, what we can do is we can just duplicate the main camera and change its tag to untagged for the moment uh, we can press W and we can move it down all the way here uh, so negative 25 and then we can also give it the name of battle camera we can go to our game manager and drag out battle camera there which I'll yep and then for our battle camera, we can go to our UI and drag our battle there. So we can just set its Y to negative 25 and then it's X to zero. And we want this, uh, we want this to be the same size as the battle camera, but for now we'll just uh, put it under the battle camera and then we can uh, resize it to see fit. So we just go ahead and uh, resize the entire thing. Uh, like such and for now that'll be fine and do what we need to do so if we go over to our uh, long grass for example we can see that we need to add the script in long grass so if we go to our prefabs and then our long grass we can add component and I'm just gonna write long grass and for now we we'll just set the default to be grass and uh, the other thing that we need to add quickly is on our player, we just need to give himself a box collider as well. And um, for now, we can just make it a tiny bit smaller if we need it. So we can say size x is 0 0.8 and y is 0 0.8. Uh, and then we can also move it down on the y just a tad. Uh, so it's negative 0 0.1, for example. And so we save that. And then this one final thing we just have to add to the player, sorry, uh, just a rigid body 2D, and we can also set its gravity scale to zero for now. All right, so if we go walking over to our long grass, we should see that if we walk around long enough, uh, yeah, <laughs> we will get into a battle. Um, so yes, we're now in a battle. Uh, now the other thing is that our player can still walk around and we don't want that while he's in the battle. However, we will be fixing that next episode. Thank you guys for watching, and I can't wait to see you guys next episode when we start implementing the Pokemon. And uh, as always, if you have any suggestions, just leave me a message in the comments below or on my Twitter, at Games. Thanks, guys. See you next time.